Press your Windows key. Type in Control Panel. Go to Hardware and Sound Power Options. Choose the High Performance Power Plan. Now, let's go into FL Studio. Press F10 to open up the settings. Go to Audio in the CPU section. Multi-threaded generator processing. Enable that. Also enable multi-threaded mixer processing and smart disable. Most important thing is to use the Apple Studio ACO drivers. But if your audio card offers specific ACO drivers, use those. For example, I use this UMC ACO drivers with my Behringer audio card to achieve 100% compatibility with audio inputs and outputs. Buffer length. ImageLine recommends buffer length between 10 to 40 milliseconds, but not lower than 10 milliseconds, because reasons. Sample rate. Use the sample rate of 44.1 kHz or 48 kHz if that is not available for you. Also, make sure that your audio card and operating system are set to the same settings. To check your operating system sample rate, go to Control Panel, Hardware and Sound. Click Sound. Look for your playback device. This is mine. Right click, go here. Go Advanced. In here, you can see what sample rate your operating system and this playback device is working on. You can change it from here. Also, you need to make sure that your audio card is working on a same sample rate. Like I said, I am using Behringer audio card with UMC drivers. So what I'm going to do is I am going to open up UMC control panel. This software comes with the drivers. In here. I can see my current sample rate is 44.1 kHz. Mixer resampling. This setting should be around 24 points sync, like shown in here. The higher this setting, the higher the CPU usage. This setting affects the quality of pitched samples in FL Studio. So, if your live setting is 24 point sync and your rendering setting is 512 point sync, there is of course going to be obvious differences between what you hear in your project file and the rendered audio file. Here I have a demonstration of what this setting actually does and how big of a difference there actually is. This sound in here. is recorded with two-point linear mode. This sound over here is exactly the same, only difference is that it is recorded with 64-point sync. Sounds like this. The difference might not be that obvious immediately, but there is a trick that we can use to make sure that there actually is a difference. In here, I have two copies of the same audio file. When these two sounds are exactly the same and the polarity is reversed from the other sound, we should get complete cancellation aka silence. But when I deselect this option, there will be sound. Now, those sounds you saw before were exactly the same when we used the reverse polarity option, we did get complete silence. Now, I have the linear sound, the sound that was recorded with the two-point sync. Then, I have this other sound, which is exactly the same, only difference is that it is recorded with 64-point sync. I reversed the polarity from the linear sound. So there is a difference between these two sounds. So, keep this in mind when you are working on your projects. And remember, this only affects the pitched audio or sample channels inside FL Studio. Check your plugin settings, if and most likely you are using third-party plugins. For example, I'm gonna open up Divester 2 in here. If I go to settings, processing quality, we can see the real-time and offline settings. In this case, my real-time processing quality is set to high but when I'm rendering my sounds out, it is set to ultra. So be aware of this. If there is a case 
where you open up a specific plugin and it is really really laggy after that, try to check out these settings. When you are checking out these settings with plugins and check out if your plugin is running a 64-bit version or 32-bit version. If you are running a 32-bit version of your plugins in 64-bit version of FL Studio, the plugins that are 32-bit need to be bridged and this causes higher CPU usage than not bridged. So make sure that you are actually using 64-bit version of your plugins if there is a 64-bit version and most of the times there is. PPQ settings. This controls the resolution of your project file. Usually around 96 PPQ is enough to do everything and sometimes you can work with even less. So you can find this setting from here. As you can see, by default we are running 96 PPQ. We can increase this resolution and what this does, it makes everything kind of more accurate resolution-wise. So, uh, for example, the zoom of the playlist is limited by this setting. The bigger the setting, the more you can zoom in to your audio files. The smaller this setting, the less CPU it uses. So if you can get away by using smaller number than 96, go for it and it will work just fine. And remember, this setting is project related. You need to set this specifically for every single project you are working on. Not using the stretch mode. This mode should only be used if your project has tempo changes or if you actually need to use it for some other reason. Otherwise, use the offline stretching modes that you can find from here. These are much, much more CPU light compared to the stretch modes. Know what plugins are actually heavy to use. In here I have kind of a big project that I've been working on. You can find everything about this project on my Patreon. If I go here where it says view, let's open up the plugin performance monitor and let's play the track from here for example. So here you can see that the Toraverb River plugin is using the most CPU. And by the way, by double clicking this, you can actually open up the plugin. So this is a River plugin that is sitting in this channel. So for example, what I can do is I can just highlight the area and Ctrl Alt C to consolidate the whole thing. And just by doing this, we are saving a lot of CPU space for something else. And lastly, some things you can try if nothing is still working out for you. If you have a project file that is really, really lagged, you can try to enable and disable these settings over here. If you have a situation where you're lagging a lot and your CPU is crying, you can try to use these settings. But remember, if these settings do not help you at all, remember to deselect them. And you can also try to use these reset plugins on transport setting if there is any sort of glitches when you start and stop the playhead in the playlist. If you have multiple plugin windows opened up behind your playlist and mixer like this, it will still eat your CPU power. You don't see the plugins but they are still active. So my number one tip is to enable this setting detach all plugins. What this does is um, this plugin will always stay on top so you must close it yourself to get rid of it. If you are not a fan of detaching your plugins you can just press Alt F12 and it will close all the plugin windows. And of course like every single Apple Studio performance tutorial go here, go here and press this button.